Hi, welcome back to Post TV Live from NAB. It's day two here, and we, uh, we have Rob Powers from New Tech, and Lightwave 11 is now shipping, and it's, it was a big release, and I'm hoping that you could kind of walk us through all the, the major things that, that our readers and viewers need to know. Absolutely. Well, we're very excited about Lightwave 11. Um, this release, you know, a lot of the users and, and studios are saying this is the most powerful version of Lightwave ever. We're excited about our new instancing system. We have a new flocking system. We've integrated uh, Python scripting as the core language, which, you know, with our integrated suite that now plugs into all pipelines, Python is the base language for all the studio's workflows. Mm -hmm. So we're excited about that. Um, we have quite a few uh, rendering enhancements. And uh, we're excited about that. Uh, now, in 3D, you guys have really embraced the stereoscopic workflow as well. Can absolutely. you talk about the tools that absolutely. are in Absolutely. You know, Lightwave's stereoscopic workflow, you know, obviously my background on Avatar and 1010 and all of that, working with Chuck Comiskey and, and uh, Jim Cameron and getting uh, the education from them, we have integrated the workflows that I think are, are so simple. It, it gives you the power. We, we uh, support all major types of stereoscopic, uh, you know, uh, uh, display, you can, uh, in the viewport, see Anaglyph. You can also export to any uh, display device. But it's it's pretty much a one button push. You push it and you see in the interface so that you can dial those interocular settings and uh, you know just, just nail it really quickly. Amazing, now what, what other what other tools are in the system that people might not know about? Just some, some extra stuff that will help them in their, in their job. Well, you know, I love uh, products like ZBrush. It's a great sculpting tool yep. for artists. We have added GoZ and Lightwave 11. It is, it's one of the most robust, uh, I think, uh, versions of, of GoZ. Uh, you can sculpt morph targets on your characters. You can, with one button push, uh, it sets up the node flow for renders for all of your texture surfaces, your displacements, your normal maps. It makes it easier for artists. I mean, our overview in 11 is to add great tools that are, you know, the workflow has been thought about. We've implemented bullet dynamics, which, if you know all the, the TV productions and, and, and uh, the, the film projects that are happening, we love to blow stuff up. We love to destroy things, we love, but we don't want to sit there and wait for weeks, you know, right. or have to take a long lunch because you're doing a calculation. Bullet is, is so interactive for the artist in the interface, and we have a great implementation of that, but we didn't just stop there. We, we thought, you know, when I, when I, I'm, a, I'm a user, so I said, how are people going to get stuff into the format where Bullet can actually break it up? So we created a great fracture tool. So you take your, your, your objects, your assets in, a spaceship, a building, a bridge, Fracture just shatters it and prepares it for what's going to happen next with Bullet. It's really fun. And it's fast. So I know that you guys are used a lot on TV series. Absolutely. Because of the speed, right? Absolutely. Turnarounds are quick. Yeah. The workflow of Lightwave, we, we started in TV production. We have been such a strong player from Babylon 5, the first major visual effects show that Ron Thornton spearheaded, to today with The Walking Dead and, and you know, Terra Nova was also uh, uh, using our product. And we're very excited about that. We, we just love the TV market. We think it's a great, uh, uh, it, it's some of the best work, if not the best work that's out there, I think. But you're also involved in film. So I know that there's a couple of scenes in Hunger Games? Absolutely. The, you know, one of my favorite scenes when she knocks the, the hornet uh, nest down onto the, the, the people. I don't want to give a spoiler, but uh, whoops. It, uh, didn't, it did not happen. But, theoretically, somebody yeah, knocked over theoretically, a hornet's nest. And it was great work that's not theoretically from Pixamundo. Pixamundo did awesome work. Eric that's Hans, right. a supervisor, and, and uh, Jen Hachigian was working on that over at the studios in Burbank. Beautiful work. Loved the film. Did you see it? Yes. <laughs> You should see it. It's great. I'm if you going seen to. It. If you haven't NAB. seen it, see it. It's awesome. I've been a little busy, but <laughs> I will. I promise. I will. Um, so, and also an indie film. Is, yes. So it's being used on an indie film. Absolutely. There's this. Uh, you know, one of the things I love is the work that the users do with the tools that we create, because that's what really we do this for. But there's a company called Energia Productions in Finland. In Finland, and they came up with this really interesting idea, and they went to the internet and they said, "We have this great idea. What do you guys think?" And the internet, everyone from all over the world invested a million dollars for them to get kickstarted. The whole budget of the feature is something like 1.7, 1.9 million. And the, oh, this was over the web. They collected? this was over the web that okay. they collected the first million, and then they did the production for one. You know, for I think seven point. Did I say one point? It's seven point nine, seven point seven million, something like that dollars. But they have eight hundred visual effects shots in the film. Half of the film is done with Lightwave. 
It's beautiful shots. It's science fiction. It's it's a crazy concept, but the quality of the work. It's South by Southwest. People were freaking out. They just loved this project. It opened in Europe, and now it's coming to the U.S. And we're very excited that they used our tool uh, for, for for this film. I think you brought a clip. Is that yes, something we that we could that we could run? Okay. Here it comes. This is, I just want to state that, you know, the video is going to say this, but they had 20 artists total in eight months do 800 shots, half of the film. Only 12 of those artists were the 3D artists using Lightwave. The rest of them were compositors, Nuke, and that kind of thing. So 12 people, really, for the CG, did this in eight months, 800 shots, half of the film. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous uh, product, and, and, and I think it's, it's, a, it's a really fun concept, and it's getting uh, received very well. So I love empowering, like, these, you know, if they went to the studios, the studios would have to empower them to do something. But these people had an idea, they used our product, they went to the internet, and this is a new model. They, they got an investment for a million dollars, their idea was great, people believed in it all over the world, and it exists now, and it's a great work of art that they created. And the cost of your tools puts a lot more software into people's hands, so that's gotta help as well. Absolutely, and the thing that I love about our product is from end to end, if you go look at some other competing product, you ask them, what do you render in? Well, it's going to most likely be something else that you have to add on. You have to set up a complex pipeline. The thing I love about our product is you think of a concept on Monday, and you model it. And by on Friday, you've rendered the final thing in our product. We have the most beautiful renderer. All the images that you saw in Iron Sky and uh, Hunger Games and The Walking Dead and Terra Nova and on and on has rendered in our software for 20 years. All of the things, the Star Trek series, Babylon 5, Serenity, Firefly, we just... We love the work and the quality of that renderer is so beautiful, but I'm being a film student myself from USC, the images are the only thing that really matters in the final analysis. Nobody cares about all the other stuff. Right. So getting to that final image all in the package for me is, is one of the things I love about Lightwave and Lightwave 11 has just raised uh, you know, the bar on that. Can you, um, can you tell us the cost of the software? Well, it's uh, $14.95 for the full version. Amazing. And when you buy that, the, amazing, the thing that's crazy for me, I have to talk to them about this, because when you purchase Lightwave, you get 999 render licenses included with this amazing renderer. So for studios, it's incredible. For individual artists, it's incredible. It removes that whole problem of setting up that pipeline and having to export or, or worry about shaders or you know, all of this stuff. It removes it from the, from the process. We have just, you know, and just look at the quality. The quality speaks for itself, I think. Well, thanks, Rob. Thank I you. I appreciate you taking the time. I appreciate it. I'm, and, I'm uh, happy to be here. Well, thanks, and thanks for sharing the clip. It was great. Great. And we'll see you soon. All right. Thanks, Randy. We'll be right back with Matrox, so stay tuned. And send in questions. Post. Really. Thank you. Post rocks. <laughs> <laughs>